freedom and it's a Sunday yes it fucking is time for a bit of what's up so gonna be a rather short one but I thought I'd touch on something that no doubt a lot of vapors in the UK have been hearing a lot about um, over in the United States postal services are essentially either have already kind of banned internal and external vape mailing or are getting close to doing it. So we're talking about USPS, where it all started. And what happened is when the COVID relief bill got pushed through, um, when the COVID relief bill got pushed through, all sorts of other fucking weird and wonderful things that had fuck all to do with COVID got shoved into the bill as well because all the politicians knew that if this bill didn't get through, if the bill didn't get through, there would be a massive outcry. So all sorts of crap was crammed into the COVID relief bill at the same time because it was a guaranteed pass. And one of them was to do with USPS, United States Postal Service, which is the internal postal service that's basically funded by the government to a certain extent, or not to a certain extent, to a most extent. It's a much like the Royal Mail here <coughs> in the United Kingdom. Um, so USPS, which is the major carrier for internal mail and a little bit of external mail, you know, going out to other countries and stuff, USPS basically announced what is essentially a ban of vape mail now. There are seemingly there is some ways around it, and what's been happening recently, very recently, is some carriers have decided to do the adult route, which means when the item is delivered, before they can hand it over to the end user, the customer, the number one ask for the person's age, and number two ask for identification to prove the person's age. Something similar happens here in the UK when you're buying alcohol online. For instance, Amazon, right? If you buy a bottle of whiskey, which I do now and again off of Amazon, they actually ask you for proof of age because, you know, it's alcohol. You've got to be over 18 to buy it online in the UK or buy it in a pub if you're in the UK. Something similar is happening in the United States for some carriers. The problem is... Because it's basically turned into recorded delivery, you know where I'm going with this now, because it's basically turned into recorded delivery, very similar feature here in the UK, postal prices have doubled and in some cases tripled in the United States. Um, we have seen, as vapors over here in the UK have watched what's going on in the United States, what is essentially the slow and ongoing collapse of US-based vape manufacturers. Squid Industries is gone, makers of the double barrel. Kennedy is gone, makers of this, the Kennedy RDA, uh, the Vindicator, the Kennedy Mech, very well-known brand Kennedy. They've been on the go for more than a fucking decade now. I thought, well, they were on the go for more than a decade, and there is more and more dominoes falling over in the United States, even though by the looks of it, it's not a full vape mail ban. Stuff can still get through. But that stuff that's getting through, the postal cost, is crippling. Absolutely crippling for the end user. In other words, the customer. And this is why you're seeing a lot of vape shops closing their doors. Um, that's why you're seeing a lot of vape shops, either online or brick and mortar, deciding, we've had enough, we're shutting our doors now. We are seeing the slow, gradual unwinding of the US vape market. Is the US vape market dead? No. No. It will keep going, but it will keep going at a severely crippled rate, at least for the next two or three months, until the rest of the carriers, DHL, UP, not UPS, DHL, yeah, UPS, FedEx, and a couple of other internal carriers sort out their rules. One of the carriers are now saying they will have a full set of rules and regulations out on their website by the end of this month. And I think that's UPS that said that. 
but I'm not sure. Vape mail is still being delivered, but the cost to do it is prohibitively expensive because they're now asking for signatures and proof of identification at the customer side of things. On top of that, you've got insane tax levels, which is happening in, it's not Minnesota. Is it Minnesota? No. It's Minnesota or Michigan. It's one of the states beginning in M. Somebody put a screenshot up on um, Deuces Jack's group, actually, the Vaping Insider, him that done the, him that designed the mongrel. His group, somebody put a screenshot up. The tax in this state is more than the item actually costs. It literally doubles the price. So on top of that, you've got the postal problem as well. And what we are seeing is the slow unravelling of the US vape industry. What kind of effect is that going to have on everyone else? We're already seeing it now. We're already seeing it now. This week, there was one pod that came in for review. Last week was two pods that came in for review. The week before that, nothing came in for review. Some of the big names in the vaping industry have decided to hold releases until they see what's actually going on in the United States and how the dust is going to settle and what kind of shape the US industry is going to be in once that dust actually settles. For the last two weeks, large e-cig manufacturers in Shenzhen and China have been shedding their marketing departments. Over the past week and a half, Five, it was four, now it's five because I've got. I, I checked my emails today. I'm going to answer them tomorrow, but I checked my emails today. Now it's five lead PR heads of various Shenzhen-based companies, vaping companies in China, have moved on. They've, they've moved on. They're not, in, they're not even in the industry anymore. They're off doing something else. They sent emails out saying, we're gone, bye. Company's still there. The lead marketing department or the, the lead marketer for their marketing department either quit or were fired. More about that in about a minute and a half. On top of that, one of the two big e-cig shippers and sellers in Shenzhen in China, their lead marketer has left as well. Now, were they pushed or did they leave of their own accord? I said this, when I first started noticing this happening, when it came to the marketing side of things on Facebook, and more importantly on Instagram, there is a definite shift going on with a lot of the big names over in Shenzhen. Not only are they no longer releasing their major marketing push on central US standard time, they are releasing their major marketing push in central European time. Of the head PR people that left, four of the five were based in companies who didn't shift their marketing position. They were pushing the US marketing, which is what a lot of companies were doing right up until the point the postal ban was actually announced. On the run-up to the postal ban being announced, you've seen it from Geek Vape, Vandy Vape, Aspire, and to a certain extent Smock, who were moving the target of marketing away from mostly the United States over to a more central European time. But a lot of companies didn't do that. And out of those companies, four of their marketing leads are gone. They were either pushed out or they decided to resign themselves. Who knows? Who knows? Now. For the next two months, and this is, this is mostly guesswork on my part, but for the next two months, the market is going to be slowed down dramatically. We've already started to see the slowdown starting to take shape, as more and more companies are now unsure as to what's actually happening with internal vape mail deliveries, whether it be business to business or whether it be business to customer the uncertainty is now starting to have an impact. There is several big releases 
that was due to take place at the end of this month, beginning of May, that are now put on hold. There was several, well, not fucking more than several, there was about a dozen, coming to think of it, podcasts that were due to be released, and AIOs for that matter, that were due to be released from next week running on and through into the beginning of May. All of them are now on hold, and marketing as a whole has taken a back foot. It's almost as if everyone's waiting to see what happens once the dust has settled. It's going to take two, maybe three months. So we're looking midway through to the end of summer of this year before the full impact and assessment of the impact is actually tallied up by what's left of the marketing departments of the big companies over in Shenzhen and China. But while this is all going on, in the background as the marketing strategy has moved from the United States to the United Kingdom and Europe, I think we're going to see a change in what's being produced. Now, there is one very large untapped market that only until very recently has been left mostly ignored by marketing departments across Shenzhen, and that's Russia. Russia like their mechs. Russia like their high-powered devices. Russia likes their rebuildables. Russia love to chuck clouds. Russia is now in the same position that the United States was during the golden age of vaping, which is 2015 to 2017. That three-year span when the United States was essentially the wild west of vaping before any kind of regulation stateside or federal side came in. Russia is in that position right now. And they've been in that position for the past year and a half. There's rumours going around that Vladimir Putin wants to put a 5 to 10% flat rate tax on e-cigarettes. And 5 to 10% is nowhere near as bad as some of the stupid, ridiculously high percentage rates that's happening over in the United States right now. Has anyone noticed, and I think I mentioned this about two weeks ago, there is now a rise in Russian language marketing. Not just for the text that's typed, but for the text that's actually on the marketing as well. I've been noticing it more and more on Instagram and on a couple of Twitter accounts for a couple of the smaller business, the smaller manufacturers over in China. They're now realising that for all these years, there's been an ever-increasing amount of vapours in Russia. And I think what's going to happen is over the next three to four months as we go through summer and then enter the autumn and winter release cycle for this year going into the beginning, the June, uh, not June, January and February of 2022, as the dust begins to settle in the United States, I think we're going to see a massive push into the Russian market. There is two things that is constant in the vaping scene. No matter where you are on the planet, there is two things that's constant in the vaping scene. Germany, in the European Union, loves their mechs. Russia, just outside the European Union, love their mechs. If you're a mech mod fan, I have got a sneaky suspicion that as we head into the autumn of this year, we are going to see a massive push of mainstream tube and box mechanical mods. Something similar happened round about 2017 going into 2018, with the likes of Vandevape releasing mechs, with the likes of Geek Vape releasing tube mechs and box mechs, and then all of a sudden in 2018-19, it kind of stopped. You had Ceres Vape coming out with one or two mechs, but all of a sudden it kind of stopped. That was the swerve that was going on in the US market, as less and less people over in the United States were buying mechs, and more and more people in the United States market were switching over to general high-powered dual battery mods. That's not happening in Germany or in Russia, though. 
It's not happening. And sales of AIOs and pods in Germany, and especially in Russia, are on the decline. Very, very fast decline as the advanced vaping community in Central Europe and in Russia decide they want to get more of this in their life. We're going to see a shift and that shift is going to start happening at the end of summer this year as more and more e-cig companies in China are sitting back to see how the dust is settling in America even if the dust settles on the positive side of things, the fact remains, even if these internal shippers in the United States are still able to ship to the end user, postage costs are going to go up because they will have to ask for proof of ID to prove the age of the end user. It's much like recorded delivery here in the UK. Or it's much like an alcohol delivery with Amazon. But the problem in the United States is a delivery like that, the price basically doubles to ship something out. That's one of the reasons, even though it looks as if shipping may still be a thing, but on a limited basis. It's one of the reasons why a lot of ape shops have decided, fuck it, we've, we give up. What's the point? We give up. We're shutting our doors. That's why Kennedy, makers of this, is no longer around. Because Kennedy no doubt knew, even if there was loopholes to get round the all-out ban, which it looks as if there is, postage costs will still increase. And if postage costs increase too much, that cost has to be put on to the end user, which it already is with some shipping that's going on in the United States. Vaping is becoming a lot more expensive. In the US, that is, if you order online, it's becoming a lot more expensive with the added difficulties that have been added in because of the shipping problems. While all this is going on, Shenzhen is waiting for the dust to settle to see what kind of state the US market's already in. But we, what we're looking at is a three to four month ongoing dust settling process. So what are Shenzhen going to do? They're going to shift their marketing. That's what they're doing. They're going to shift their marketing. I've got a nasty suspicion that we're going to see a lot more marketing managers in Shenzhen be let go of, especially the ones that decided not to shift their marketing focus from a 100% US-based marketing approach onto what Aspire started doing, which is a 40% US market in an approach, and a 60% on top of that directed towards the European Union, and a little percentage towards Russia. Have you noticed that all the companies that went down the road of wee US marketing, bling, bling, they're silent all of a sudden. They haven't released anything for a good number of weeks. But the companies that have decided to focus their marketing away from a 100% US-based marketing strategy to a 50-50 split between the US and the European Union, they're still releasing stuff, albeit at a much slower pace, but they're still releasing. This is one of the reasons I'm still getting stuff in. It's from some of the big names that shifted their market in position when the vape mail announcement was officially made. They've had a good two or three months to prepare for the ongoing, the ongoing shit show that's happening in the United States right now. But a lot of companies have been caught with their pants down. We are seeing the beginnings of a shift not just in release cycles, but we are at the beginning of a shift in what's actually going to be produced. Because as pod sales and AIO sales have crashed in Russia, and as pod sales and AIO sales are on the verge of falling off a cliff in Central Europe because of the, because of the growing number of advanced vapors that are that are on the exponential rise in Central Europe. These companies that have been producing AIO pod, AIO pod, AIO pod, are going to have to go out of that cycle and move on to a cycle where they start releasing dual battery kits or dual battery 18650 or 21700 mods. Has anyone noticed 
there is a lot more mods being announced on Facebook recently. That's got a lot to do with what's happening in Central Europe and more especially what's happening in Russia. Russia don't care about pods. They want their mechs. They want their rebuildables. They want their dual battery 18650 base 200 watt smock mods. That's what they want because they're all insane over there. They like the high powered stuff. They really like their high powered stuff over in Russia. <sighs> estimates and this is estimates no one's actually taken full figures of how many vapors are actually in russia but the estimates are anywhere between 8 to 10 million vapors in russia and it's mostly an untapped market will it replace the u.s market no no because the u.s had anywhere between at last estimate 10 to 15 million vapors which is probably on the decline because of the bans and stupid taxes that's going on over there but if a lot of these companies play their play their cards right and they shift focus towards the eu and russia their losses from the loss of the american market will be slightly offset by the sales in the russian market now again the russian economy uses the ruble which is it's like fucking 30 million rubles to a dollar or something like that the russian economy is a bit on the eh side right now but it's still income for shenzhen it's still income for the for the manufacturers over in shenzhen it won't completely offset the losses that's happening in the united states market but it will soften the blow at least we are in the middle of a big change a very big change we will no doubt see the slow and gradual amalgamation of several industries within the e-cigarette industry itself we will see the bankruptcy and it's gonna happen it's gonna happen i don't know I've got a f there's a couple of companies that spring to mind immediately but i'm not going to mention them we're going to see the bankruptcy notice or merger of smaller companies that didn't do the marketing shift into bigger companies that did do the marketing shift think smock taking over with tofu that kind of idea large behemoth companies hoovering up all the smaller ones we're going to see an amalgamation of the industry over in shenzhen we're going to see an amalgamation of the industry or at least what's left of the industry over in the united states when the dust settles after we figure out after everyone figures out what shipper is doing what in the u.s and with the amalgamation of both the u.s and chinese market a similar amalgamation is bound to start taking hold in Europe and possibly to a certain extent the United Kingdom. Because the US market is on the downturn, it is affecting the market as a whole. It's not going to cripple the market. It's not going to shut down the market, but it is going to change it. It's going to change it drastically because the old adage of what Smock were doing, tick talk release cycles which is what intel does tick brand new mod brand new board and chip talk same board and chip shoved in a different housing the tick talk theory what smock decided to do is skip the tick and just do talk 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 that's what they've done all the way through 2018 2019 going into 2020 the same fucking board and chip over and over and over again shoved into a different housing and what happened all the vape shops lapped it up because smock mods and vapor so for that matter and all the other mod makers out there they decided to do a quick release succession cycle based off the smock way of doing it and vape shop shelves were crammed full of good decent dual battery 18650 mods then the pod market erupted then the aio market erupted and all that was pushed to one side now the pod well not so much the pod market now the aio markets on the decline not just in the us but also in europe and the uk we've been noticing smock is starting to wake up again they're going back to dual battery 18650 mods and they're back to the tick talk theory of what they were doing before they went just to talk 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 now they're actually doing 
major overhauls of their chips and boards on every second release cycle of their mods. That's going to have to slow down. That's going to have to slow down. Because you're looking at the US market on the decline. They haven't managed to market as successfully as they thought they would in the Russian market. Because smock don't make mechs. Simple as that. So you're going to see a slowdown happening. And it's already begun, to be honest. I'm seeing it here. I'm seeing it over here. This time last year, even though the UK was already in its first lockdown, I was still getting three or four packages a week because China had come out of the lockdown by that point in time. I was still getting three or four packages a week. One year on, China is long past the lockdown. The UK is slowly lifting its lockdown. I've had three pods and an AIO. And that's over the past two and a half to three weeks. That's been it. Three pods and an AIO. <clears throat> there is a slowdown. There is a definite slowdown happening. It's not a case. It's not a case of what some people were surmising of e-cigarette companies not dealing with reviewers anymore. That's not the case. If you look at the marketing that's actually being released by these companies, they're not releasing anything because they're waiting to see what the damage will be with the United States market settling down to its new reality of postal services fucking everyone off. That's what's happening right now. And this is going to continue all the way through the rest of spring and going into summer and possibly even beyond into the very beginning of autumn. Interesting times we are currently in when it comes to the electronic cigarette market. <sighs> From what I've been able to see of some of the marketing stuff that's coming in, there will be enough releases on the go, at least for the next month or so, to keep this channel going. But it may get to the stage, and I'm looking ahead into the likes of July... I'm looking ahead into the likes of July and August as the transition starts to take place. It may be a case that maybe June, no, not June, maybe July and August, there may be only one release a week. One, one new mod or one new pod a week. And when we get to that stage, when we see the full and utter slowdown and basic collapse of the release cycles, when that happens, you know they're tooling up to do something new. And I think it's going to be mechs. I think what we are going to see as we go into the autumn winter schedule is a release cycle that we haven't seen for a long time. I think that's what we're going to see. Something along the lines of AIO mech dual battery mod. AIO mech dual battery mod. I think that's what we're going to see. We're going to see more tube or box-based mechanicals being released for one simple reason. Marketing is shifting towards the EU and Russia. And if there's one thing that Russia loves, it's mechanicals. Yeah. <sighs> July and August is the two months to look out for. By that point in time, by July and August, we will know the extent of the damage. In fact, we might we might even know it at the beginning of January. All I know is a lot of a lot of the shippers are releasing the first wave of rules, their rules and regulations to do with vaping and electronic cigarette distribution, and not just that, CBD as well. They've actually mentioned CBD and THC in some of these letters. Some of the companies are releasing their notices at the end of this month. Other companies are releasing their notices at the very beginning of May. Once those notices come out and we get a read of it, it will take a further three or four weeks for the whole industry in the United States to figure out if I'm a vape shop and I'm going to keep shipping or I'm a vape shop, fuck this, I'm out of here. 
that's when we'll start to see the dust settle and we'll see the extent of the damage that's happened in the United States vape industry. It's not a simple case of, here we go, vape bans happening, this is how the dust is settled. It takes weeks, weeks to see how, to see how that dust will finally settle in the United States industry. And I think over in Shenzhen, they're hedging a bet here. They're hedging a bet that when the dust settles, the US industry won't be crippled beyond repair, but it will have dropped its market share in profits. Here's the thing. If you're an ordinary, everyday vapor who pops into your local vape shop for your 18 milligram tobacco that you like to vape on. What happens if your local vape shop shuts down? You go to another local vape, because generally speaking in large towns and cities, there's two or three vape shops in the high street, so that one shuts down. You go to your next favourite, who might be a little bit more expensive than the last one you went to, but hey-ho, you can deal with it. Then that vape shop shuts down because of the postage restrictions because they do a lot of online sales. So you go to the third and final vape shop on your local high street, who are relatively much more expensive than the previous two. And then you sit there and think, well, this is too expensive. Maybe I can try ordering it online. So they go online to their favorite, va favorite online vape shop in the United States, and they realize their favorite online vape shop is either shut down or their postage their postage expenses has doubled compared to the last time that person actually decided to buy something online. We need to remember here, the silent majority. The three words that I spoke about a lot over the past couple of years. The silent majority. In the United States, there's anywhere between 10 to 15 million vapors. 95% of that number don't look at YouTube reviews. Don't even think of going to Facebook to join vaping groups. Don't care about following advocacy people on Instagram. Don't even know what the fuck advocacy's about. All they want to do is go to their local vape shop and buy two bottles of tobacco juice for their favourite podcast. The silent majority. And it's the silent majority that's going to feel the biggest pinch in what's going on over in the United States right now. It's the silent majority that keeps the US market afloat. And it's the silent majority that's going to take the heaviest losses of vapors leaving vaping and possibly going back to smoking. And if the silent majority numbers collapse in the United States market, the Russian and European markets will take over. If they haven't already. I don't think they have, though. I don't think they have. But uh, it's getting fucking close to it. I can tell you that right now. It's getting fucking close to it. <sighs> Interesting times we're living in. We haven't seen... We haven't seen... A shift in the industry as a whole like this since the original TPD2 first dropped in the European Union with the 20 milligram cap on nicotine and the two, mil the two milliliter cap on tanks. We haven't seen a shift this big since the TPD2 dropped in the European Union. What kind of state the industry is this time next year one year from now, is going to be anyone's guess. It's going to be anyone's guess. How many companies are still going to be manufacturing e-cigs and how many vape shops, online or brick and mortar, is going to be left open in the United States one year from now? How will the dust settle once everything is said and done? And what kind of releases will the main Shenzhen companies be doing to cater to the rising European and Russian markets. I still think if you're a mech head, you're going to enjoy the end of this year. I still think that's on the cards. Anyway. 
that's basically it, folks. There, there's no first looks because I got one pod kit in, and that's basically been it. Although next week, I am, I am going to be getting a rather interesting stabilized wood mod. Um, I was going to say possibly. It probably is the world's first stabilize wood mod manufactured in the uk that has the dna 100c board and chip in it the 100c is on general public release from stealth vape at least starting sometime midway through next week but this certain mod manufacturer has got his hands on some dna boards direct from evolve no doubt and he's sending me one of his first stabilize wood dna 100c mods um i will be putting the review up for said mod sometime oh, it's probably going to be it's probably going to be this coming friday because I'll, I'll be getting the mod sometime on monday afternoon from royal mail and i'm going to take tuesday and wednesday and a little bit of thursday to test the mod out and i'll record everything of that review on the Thursday afternoon up at the studio, which means the table cam, the B-roll shots, the insert shots, and the final thoughts is all going to be recorded on the Thursday for the video to be uploaded on Friday. Um, because, yeah, interesting. The DNA 100C, it plugs a gap and evolves board lineup because it's a big jump from the 75C to the 250C. There's nothing in between. Well, there was that DNA 160, but the 160 was never popular. Was it a 160? There was a board in between, but that, was, that wasn't a popular one. Wasn't a popular one. But this new DNA 100C board, it's a fresh board build from the ground up. 100C, so that review's going to be up next week along with a shitload of pods and an AIO. <laughs> I think, no, hold on. The Expromiser, that's right, the Expromiser V5, that reviews up next week as well. So you get one stabilised wood mod, a rebuildable, and I think the rest is pods. The fucking, there's a stack of pods. I just piled them in the corner. There's a stack of pods about this high in the corner of the other studio waiting to be reviewed. There's fucking loads of them I need to go through. Loads of them. Anyway, that is it for me, folks. As always, thanks for watching. And have a good one.